So when you talk about, you, you're saying the emotions happen first, that <coughs> confuses me because I feel like the emotions come from a thought that you have set some sort of um, rule for yourself or something, and then it, it, or someone else has set one for you, and then it gets broken, or you, and then you have, feel fear, or you feel, you know, bad about it, and so what comes first, the chicken or the egg? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and the answer is the emotion comes first, but most people um, are not aware of the original causal emotions, because the original causal emotions began when you were in your mother's womb. In other words, before you had any conscious thoughts. What happened was that as soon as you incarnated, as soon as you incarnate into the physical form, but when you incarnate, it's, uh, I, don't know, I, I don't know if I've talked to you about this, but you, let's say that's your soul, your soul splits into two, right? So there's, you are half of the soul and then someone else in this world is another half of your soul. And your soul is attached to a spirit body and a material body. And the spirit body and the material body are created at the time of conception. And your soul incarnates and, and attaches itself to those <coughs> bodies. And they become the expression of this soul. Now, this soul, which is your emotions, desires, passions, and all those kind of things, begins absorbing everything from its environment at the time of, or shortly after the time of conception. Now, if your mother has emotions of frustration, anger, sadness, fear, and all those kind of feelings, your soul will automatically absorb those. If your father has emotions of hatred of women, or you know, lots of different emotions that the father might have, your soul automatically absorbs all of those. By the way, your soul also absorbs all the good feelings that they have as well. So if they have pleasurable feelings about some things, then your soul will also absorb them. So kind of like both. your karma. Yeah, that's right, from the moment of conception, if you like. Now, that soul then, even before it's born, is full of emotions already. And that begins to attract other situations to start triggering these emotions automatically. So the law of attraction begins right from, unfortunately, right from the time of conception onwards. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then as that occurs, the purpose of that is to expose these emotions and work through them. But unfortunately, very few people on earth actually do work through their emotions or even teach their children to work through their emotions. And so there's more emotions get dumped, more emotions get dumped on this soul. And now as those more emotions get dumped, the law of attraction works to try and expose those emotions as well. So there's more, more events being attracted to attract to, to deal with those emotions too. And so you get this long sequence of events then that seem traumatic or that can occur to that soul. But it's all based around the fact the original, what you would call the generational effects of disharmony with love being imposed upon the soul right at the beginning of the incarnation. So what comes first is yes, the emotion comes first. And those emotions cause events to occur because of the laws of attraction and those events then if you like get filtered into our belief systems our beliefs and they then reinforce in our emotional condition right? now it's those beliefs and emotions combined that cause us to have thoughts new thoughts so that's why some people, like I know this lady, for example, in, in Australia, every time she sees a moth, like just a small little moth, she panics. Right? She reacts the same way most people would to a gun being pointed at her head, mm -hmm. but because of a moth. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? No. Why does she? Well, it doesn't really make sense, does it? But that's what happened. <laughs> The reason why was when she was tiny, before she even had a thought, her brother put a moth inside of her baby clothes and she went into a panic. Does that make sense? Because yeah. she didn't know what it was and her brother was intended to scare her a bit. And she went into this panic, yelling and screaming and yelling and screaming and everything, and eventually they found the moth and pulled it out. Right? But that one event now has caused her, she's never released the emotion, and that now causes her to panic every time she sees a moth. 
So she's, she'll walk up to a door in the middle of the, you know, how you have the light on the outside and there's moss around it. She, she can't walk through that door. Now, this lady is a police officer. <laughs> so she's not afraid of anything else. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> but it's because the emotion caused a set of, like there was an event that caused, a, that in her case caused a set of emotions, right? She now has this belief, and this belief is just, you know, it, it now dominates her life in a lot of ways. Just something really simple. So, it is true also that for further thoughts can cause further emotions, of course. So you can certainly, you can certainly um, have, a, have a thought that will now trigger another set of emotions, but only if there is a resonant set of emotions that resonate with that thought generally. So for example, if you've got a fear of death inside, and then a plane crash occurs, and you were going to take off from the same airport that that plane was taken off from, right? The thought will probably come into your mind of fear of not to do that. Right. Uh, and it came from an earlier event, really, this feeling, the feeling with inside the fear that already existed. And then it being triggered by a subsequent event. And that creates another thought which creates more fear and so forth. But certainly the emotion comes first. If you, what I've found is if you let go of all the emotion, you no longer have any thoughts of fear or anything. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, so the same event can occur. Like, for instance, for example, I used to be petrified of dogs. Uh, in my childhood, I had three dogs bite me uh, because of my fear of dogs. And once I worked through all of my fears, I walk along now and an angry dog will come up and sniff me and, and wag its tail and, want, and, it, and yet go up to somebody else and be quite angry. Before, I was the one it would come up to <laughs> and get angry and bite me, right? Yeah. And, and I, I didn't change anything in myself aside from feeling the fear and processing the fear and going through that process and, and releasing it. 